Hi, my name is Evelyn Bouchard from Tandem Architecture, and today we're going to be talking about energy balance. Whenever there's a temperature difference between the interior of a building and outdoors, there will be heat loss. That loss will occur through the building envelope, so through the walls, the roof, and the slab. It'll also happen through thermal bridges, which are any kind of localized uh, breaches in the insulation through the windows and any air leakage occurring through the envelope. And lastly, through the ventilation system. So our ventilation system's job is to bring fresh air in and pull stale air out of the building. Um, but that means we're, we're bringing warm air outdoors, so we're having heat loss. So in order to maintain our stable interior temperature, our losses and gains have to be equal. And so that means that we need to build up the gain side of our equation. We will have solar gains attributed to the windows. Um, we will have interior heat gains, which are any heat gains associated with the human beings in the building. Uh, they all give off heat and any waste heat from equipment, so building equipment, appliances, and lighting. And the rest of the gains will be balanced out by the heating system. So the heating system's job is just to compensate for that, that difference between losses and gains. So. If we want to make a really efficient building, we're going to try to shrink down that portion that is attributed to the heating gains as much as possible, to the um, heating side of the gains as much as possible. Uh, so two big strategies there. We can increase the passive gains, and this is mostly going to be solar gains, to try to uh, shrink the portion that's attributed to the heating system. We're going to be careful about this, however, because we don't want to make, don't want to end up in an overheating scenario in the summertime. And um, where most of our work as passive house designers happens is in shrinking the losses. So we're gonna go into each of those categories and try to optimize it uh, to reduce the overall height of the losses column so that our heating system doesn't have to work so hard and deliver so much energy. Uh, there's actually a formula to calculate that heating uh, demand, so I'm, I'm writing that here quickly. We go into that in more detail in the courses that I teach at Passive House Canada, so if you want to learn more, um, feel free to sign up for a course there. And so there are a number of things we can do to improve our building performance. The first is to add insulation, so we're going to reduce our losses through the walls, roof, and slab by improving the insulation value and by making sure that our envelope's very airtight. So that's going to reduce our air leakage. Then we'll minimize thermal bridges. So we're going to look at all of our details and try to optimize them for air tightness and reduce the amount of thermal bridging. We will pick high performance windows and optimize their solar orientation. So triple glazed, good insulated frame, and a good installation detail. And lastly, when it comes to our ventilation system, we're gonna pick a ventilation system uh, that includes heat recovery so that the warm air that's being evacuated from the building is gonna preheat the fresh air coming in. So we're not cross contaminating, but we are exchanging heat to try to reduce the ventilation losses. So these five principles are uh, kind of the building blocks of passive house. And uh, there where we spend a lot of time, a lot of design time. And uh, the outcome of that is that we can reduce the heating demand of a building by 75 to 90% compared to a building that just meets the minimum requirements of the building code, um, mostly relying on passive strategies. If you'd like to learn more, you can find out more at Passive House Canada's website here. Uh, or on Tandem Architecture's site, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks!